All right, today let's talk about the utilities of World Blender. In World Blender Pro, we have all these utilities, and in World Blender Basics, we have most of the utilities of World Blender Pro, except for four notes: the select angle, select height range, select slope range, and the space warp. So there are a lot of utilities here. So I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I will talk about the most basics and the most useful utilities. So the first thing is the add and subtract attribute. So you just put in here and select a an attribute name. Let's say height, and you can add a certain value to it, or you can use a texture and put it in here, right? So if you change the height. Information of the landscape. It's not updating the landscape this way because uh, you need to update the landscape using this helper node, the update landscape mesh. There we go. And uh, by default, it's updating the the height channel like that. So you can manipulate the height channel using this node right here. All right. You can turn this on to subtract instead of add, and you can turn on integer. Operation instead of uh, float. So anyway, that's the add and subtract attribute node. Let's go on to the next node, the multiply and divide. This is similar to the add and subtract, but it's doing the multiply and divide instead. So let's specify the height channel to multiply. Let's say height. All right. So by default, it's multiplying by one, so there is nothing changed. But uh, you can change this value to uh, multiply the the height value with this certain value and again you can use a texture here and just like the add and subtract attribute you can turn this on to switch to a different operation in this case it's the divide operation next this is the blur attribute node so let's again blur the high channel there we go you see it's blurring the high channel and you can decrease the strength of the blur like that and also you can chain together multiple blur nodes like that and like that like that so here i'm blurring the landscape four times and it's completely washed out you can actually turn off this override to uh, not store the blurred attribute but instead outputting this blurred attribute here and you can then store it into a different attribute let's say height 2 there we go and you can store it like that okay and now we can update the landscape using the height two there we go so now we have two different height channels the height channel and the height two channel so let's switch back to the height channel right all right the expand attribute is kind of similar to the blur attribute node but instead it's uh, it's kind of uh, expand the higher values onto the lower values like that so let me get rid of the blur and replace it with the expand and again we will experiment this on the high channel there we go and increase the filter strength to one and you can see the higher points are growing onto the lower points so let's put together multiple expand nodes like that so this is before expanding and this is after expanding as you can see these nodes are like for advanced users to directly manipulate the data within the landscape normally i don't use these a lot but uh, who knows maybe you have some ideas that you want to visualize so you might find these useful and uh, the next utility i want to talk about is the normalized channel the normalized channel will normalize a certain data channel within the landscape into the zero and one range so for example this landscape is currently very high let's find the highest point it's probably around here so it's uh, 340 meters and the lowest point is somewhere around here it's 14.79 meters so if i put the normalized channel here and specify the channel to normalize let's say height it's gonna force the landscape 
to as the range of 0 and 1. So the lowest point will be 0 meter and the highest point will be 1 meter. So now I know the exact height range of uh, this landscape, right? So I can now multiply the height channel with a certain number, let's say height, and I'm not going to multiply this with 100, okay? So now I am absolutely sure that the highest point of this landscape is 100 meter and the lowest point is on the ground level. So let's go ahead and find the lowest point of the landscape. It's not this point. It's it's uh, very close, but it's not the lowest point. Maybe it's around here. Okay, this is the lowest point of the landscape. As you can see, it's it's right on the ground level. And you can actually normalize pretty much any float channels within the landscape. For example, the convexity channel. This is the convexity node. It's going to generate the convexity channel for us and we name it convexity but uh, you can actually use any other naming as long as it does not conflict with the other data channels. For example, I can call it C1 and let's see the convexity. So this is the normalized, this is the unnormalized, right? So here I can manually normalize the C1 channel using this normalized channel. So let's say C1, right? And let's visualize the C1 channel. Okay, so it normalized into zero and one space, all right? And this is before the normalized, there we go. So you can use this particular node to normalize pretty much uh, any float channel. And next, let's have a look at these selector nodes. Let's see the select angle first. Basically, it selects a certain angle of the mountain. Currently, it's selecting the zero angle, which is this angle, right? And the cone angle is 60 degrees, so it's selecting this cone right here. And you can change this like that to select a different angle and increase the cone or decrease the cone. But uh, this is a little hard to see, so I'm going to replace this node with a simpler radial displacement node. Okay, let's get rid of the viewer. Okay, this is the radial displacement, and we can select the angle of this uh, landscape using the select angle node. So let's see. There we go. And let's decrease the sharpness to zero or increase it to 1. And if we turn on this linear mask, we have something like this. The angle becomes the kind of threshold that uh, will decide the selection. Any angle larger than this threshold will be selected and smaller than this threshold will not be selected. Like that. And again, we can change the cone angle to change the the transition between the selected and non-selected. Okay, next we have the select height range node. Now, since the landscape supports uh, multiple height channel, we need to specify the height channel here. But if we leave it as empty, it's going to use the default height channel. So let's see the mask first. This is the select height range. So we have a max and a minimum height. This. Uh, this is the minimum height of the selection and this is the maximum height. There we go. And if we increase the smoothness to one, we have something like this and decrease it to zero, we have this sharp selection, right? And we can invert the selection like that. There we go. This node is only available for World Blender Pro, right? In World Blender Basics, you have this select height threshold node. This node will select the height based on a certain threshold as well as a spread value like that. So you can select, the, let's say, the top part of the mountain and make it into snow like that. Okay, let's drop in this select slope range node and let's see the selection. So much like the select height range node, it's selecting a certain range of the slope, for example, from 30 degrees to 60 degrees. So here we are selecting a certain range of slope 
to produce this mask and you can use this mask to do pretty much anything uh, for example the displacement you have this uh, mask input here and you can put this into the mask input of the displacement to uh, displace a certain part of the landscape and again this select slope range is not available in world blender basics uh, in world blender basics you only have this uh, select slope threshold and again let's see the slope threshold and increase the spread up a little bit so let's say you have a mountain like this right and the slope here is about uh, 7 degrees i mean 70 degrees the slope here is 0 degrees and if we have let's say a cliff like this right then this slope here is 90 degrees and a slope that is higher than the threshold will be selected so as a threshold of 30 degrees will be around here so it's going to select the slope here right this region and the slope here is closer to zero so it's not selected so by selecting a, a slope threshold you're selecting this region right there and what you are planning to do with that region is up to you right so let's try and uh, lower the threshold to select more slope or you can increase the slope threshold to select less slope. So if we increase this to let's say 48, then only the the slope that is higher than 48 will be selected. Okay. So that's the select slope threshold node. We also have this simulation data. Currently this no this landscape is not eroded, so there is no simulation data here. So let me just drop in a uh, erosion node real quick there we go and turn it on it's taking a little too much time so i don't want to wait for the the erosion to run so i'm going to reduce the the quality of the simulation let's say the iteration to eight there we go and also decrease the viewport rendering i mean the viewport resolution to uh, 0.125 there we go during the render time, it's going to use the resolution here. This will only reduce the resolution in the viewport, right? So anyway, let's turn back on the erosion and let's see. This is the debris channel, right? And this is the wear channel. And let's normalize the channel so that we can see what's going on. The flow channel. There we go. So you see this is pretty much like the uh, landscape data node of the material nodes right but this one is within the geometry node so you can use this to do whatever you want for example let's get rid of the viewer i want the flow to cut a little deeper into the landscape like that right so i can use this flow channel to directly manipulate the high channel and to do that, I will use this add subtract node and I'm going to use subtract operation and subtract from the high channel like that and subtracting the flow. Currently, the, the mesh of the landscape is not updating. We need to put in an update landscape mesh to see the change. OK, now the flow channel is always normalized, so the maximum subtraction is one meter which is nothing in the grand scale of this mountain we need to multiply this flow a little in order to see the result so use multiply and let's multiply this by 10 there we go we start to see some reverse going on let's say 50 as you can see the flow is cutting into the landscape like that so this is how you manually manipulate the landscape instead of using the displacement node the final note that i want to talk about is this space warp node this space warp node is pretty much like the warp landscape node but it works on a texture coordinate so here we need to specify a vector in in order for this node to work for example i can use the global texture coordinate like that all right 
And then I can use this node to generate a certain texture. Let's say the chip texture. Okay, now is a good time to get rid of the erosion because it's slowing me down. Okay, I need to set this scale to be a little bigger, 100 or maybe 1000. Okay, let's increase the strength a bit. And I think the scale is a little too small. So let's increase this to something bigger. And because it's a little too big now, we need to lower the strength. There we go. And let's see. So you see it's warping the texture coordinate before generating the, the texture. So this is without the warp and this is with the warping. So you see it's pretty much like the warp landscape, but instead you can manipulate the custom texture coordinate. Okay, so those are the basics of the utility nodes of World Blender. Now, I personally don't use the utilities very much, but maybe you have some great ideas and want to use these nodes to realize your ideas. Who knows? It's up to you how to use these nodes, right? So anyway, in the next video, I will be talking about the textures of World Blender. And the next video will also be the final video of the basic series. After that video, I will be focused on making more advanced tutorial of World Blender Pro. So stay tuned. I'll see you next time.